Hello and uh, welcome to another video from uh, trainingwhy.com. In uh, this uh, video, I will be showing you as how to set up uh, water uh, on your machine and uh, how we will be using water as uh, uh, a powerful automation testing framework uh, which is used in uh, Ruby, how we would be uh, utilizing that framework uh, to do the uh, testing. Now, um, as uh, you all know uh, from the previous uh, video, I have uh, created uh, uh, that uh, uh, functions uh, that we eventually would be going in and then putting the functionality in uh, those functions to test uh, what some are called the uh, e-commerce website. Um, so. Uh, in order to do that, first of all, we have to prepare our machine um, so that it can acknowledge and it can run uh, water. So how do we go and uh, get uh, water on our machine? Um, basically, uh, water basically helps you to control um, the execution of uh, any of your commands or actions on a browser. So um, that is basically possible if you would go and then download uh, what is called a uh, Ruby gem, um, and that is named as the Water Web Driver Ruby gem. Now, for those of you folks um, who uh, don't know what a gem is, uh, um, when you have a software that is written in Ruby. Um, that software is uh, usually distributed uh, as Ruby gems. Um, so uh, it is a sort of a, a package manager, if you will. So uh, Ruby gems is 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 uh, helping you to keep uh, uh, the latest uh, version of the Ruby files. Uh, so it kind of like helps you with the um, getting the latest versions of whatever you need to execute um, on Ruby, all right? So um, do we have it already on our machine? Now that comes with the Ruby installation. So if I go in here, if I type uh, CMD and if I look for my Ruby version, I know that uh, I probably have uh, 1.9.3p484. As of today, that is not necessarily the uh, most uh, latest one. The latest uh, version of Ruby is Ruby 2.0, um, but uh, I always prefer to have uh, like an N minus uh, one. If N is the latest version of uh, any software, N minus one definitely would help uh, because that's a more stable one. Okay, with the Ruby installation, um, we would have uh, gotten our Ruby gems. So if we need to check if Ruby gems is uh, on our machine, so we can do a gem minus uh, v, and that will give us uh, that uh, you know the Ruby gems is not only installed on our machine, but that's the version of it. So um, if you need to basically update your system, update the gems on your system, you could do a gem uh, update um, and uh, hyphen hyphen. You could do a system and that basically would go and then update with the um, you know current version of that. Um, so uh, as you can see, it is installing the Ruby Gems uh, 2.2.1, and that is uh, uh, the latest version of uh, the Ruby Gems. Uh, and when we tested it, it was 1.8.28. Uh, so if any time if you need to update it, this is how you would update it. Well, uh, what we are going to do is uh, uh, we in this video I'm going to be showing you as how to. Uh, basically go and uh, download uh, the water uh, web driver um, so that we could use that uh, uh, API to test our uh, web applications. Okay, uh, to do that, um, I have to go and say uh, gem uh, install, um, let's say, um, now well, let, me, let me show it to you uh, a slightly different way. Rather than doing it from the command line, I will go ahead and then I will create what is called a Ruby file. And in that Ruby file, I'll show you as how uh, you should be able to download uh, on your machine, um, you know, all the related files that we need. All right. So this is what I'm going to be doing. Rather than doing it uh, from the command line, I'll do it from a, a Ruby file. So we will open up uh, our 
Notepad++. So here is the shortcut to that. And I open Notepad++. And this is what I am going to do. I will say require, require. And in single quotes, I would say, okay, Ruby gems. Let's say if they are not there on my machine, um, I would require the Ruby gems. That's the first command. The next thing is, I would say that, okay, I would require um, water, right? So water web driver. So what this does is um, whenever I run this file, okay, by the way, let me save this file, uh, save as, um, um, let me just go into my C drive, go into my Ruby code and save this as, uh, um, uh, let's say, web testing uh, with water, right? Uh, dot rb all right so uh now i don't know which uh web application we would be testing um, um so right now i'm just leaving it as web testing uh maybe we would do a google or whatever so um you know the first example i want to keep it uh, pretty simple so that uh, you get the idea of how to prepare uh the environment um and um also at the same time uh, we will go ahead and then do some um automation testing using water web driver Okay, so uh, require Ruby gems. Um, then we say require uh, water web driver. Um, then uh, the other thing that we need here is um, let's say what this water web driver does is it is going to give you an API to go and then do some uh, testing on the browser. So now I have to write some code to do that. And the code I'm going to write is uh, I would um, uh, kind of like create an object. Um, so I would call that object, let's say, as the browser object. So the browser object would be coming from uh, water, right? And uh, in there, there is a browser class, so browser, and I will call the initialize or the constructor of that uh, of the browser class coming from the water API. So the water library is going to give me a browser class and I would get uh, the constructor of that browser class and uh, that is going to be I'm um, instantiating browser as an object coming from the water uh, package uh, um, and in there there's a Ruby class and I'm calling the initialize uh, method or the constructor in other words uh, it was the constructor so while doing that I could also pass on um, something like the type of uh, the browser I need to test. So uh, here I could do like I want like a Firefox or I want like uh, let's say Internet Explorer or Google Chrome or um, Opera. So in this case I'm going to go with uh, Firefox, right? Okay. Now, so once we do that, the next thing I want to do here is uh, let's say I want to go and then I want to navigate uh, using this browser uh, as an object. I want to navigate. Uh, so I would say. Okay, browser um, and um, dot um, go to, right? Go to, and where else would you like to go? Uh, let's say if we would prefer going to our own websites, which is uh, training uh, right dot net, let's say. All right, so if everything is good, right? If everything is good, if I execute this uh, code from my um, command line, um, or if I have, uh, let's say, uh, an IDE tool which lets me run this uh, file, then I should be able to uh, go and then open open this. And after we open it, we will see what else we want to do on that file. So in order to open it, um, 